who started the series last week, James. Uh, wisdom for the everyday stuff of life. And so we want to continue in that. So if you have your Bibles, whether it be a paper um, version in your hand or on your phone electronic, you can open up your app, open up your Bible to James chapter 1. And we're going to continue on this. Last week, uh, we opened up the series talking about the first couple verses. And one thing we've learned about James is it's a, it's a book full, compact, full of wisdom. Just like you're reading through Proverbs, you can go like verse by verse and be like, okay, I just want to stop with that one sentence and try to live that out today or try to receive that today. James is the same way. He takes uh, he takes words of wisdom, he tells them, and then he expounds on it a little bit. And so, I mean, you could just go a couple verses at a time. You're like, all right, that's enough. So last week, we, we started with James. We went through James 1 through 4, and we covered the idea that we should consider it all joy whenever we face trials because we know that in the middle of our trials, in the middle of situations of life, it perfects us. It makes us more like the character of God. It, it draws out the purposes of God in our lives, and we will be lacking nothing. And it doesn't mean we cover right. It doesn't mean that I want to have a Mercedes Benz and a, and a six-figure income and a white picket fence with a beautiful house. Uh, lacking nothing there it says that we're going to lack nothing in compared to the character of God. We're going to re when we go through these trials, it's going to build in us the character of God. And we're going to lack nothing because we're going to be full of faith, full of His character, full of love as we go through these trials and and work through them. So uh, today we're going to continue in this and and this next maybe next four weeks or so, it's all under this kind of umbrella of these trials and, and temptations. Um, but we're going to dive in a little bit here, and each one of these uh, sections is going to give us some wisdom on how to live our everyday life. And if you're just like me, you know I love wisdom. I want to know not just knowledge. I love studying. I can read books, and I can read different things. But I want to know how do I apply everything that I've learned to me. If I just know a lot of things, then I'm, you know, I could maybe go write a bunch of papers, be in a, uh, and do that kind of thing. I don't want to just, I don't want to just have the knowledge. I want to know what to do with the knowledge, right? That's where the wisdom comes in. So let's read today the verses that we're going to cover. In James chapter one, we're going to start in verse five and going to read through verse eight. It says this: If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed from the, by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. Let's pray that we would receive what the Lord would want us to hear today. Father, I thank you that your word is true, that your word is alive, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit has come to reveal truth to us, that he is the one that will reveal everything that you have taught. So, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We welcome you to speak to us, and Father, I pray that our ears would be open to hear exactly what you would have to say. Father, we desire to be people not just full of knowledge, but full of wisdom. Father, we pray that this day would begin that journey, that we would have all the wisdom that you desire to give us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So as, as I was talking again, uh, wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom is taking knowledge and applying it to situations, right? We can have the, the smartest person in the world. Sometimes you say something, somebody's super, really smart, but they have no common sense, right? So they, they know a lot of information, but they don't know how to like... <laughs> do everyday situations, apply it to everyday situations. So wisdom is having the right application of the knowledge that we have. And I was like, man, if we're anybody is on this journey to know who God is, we have a lot of knowledge of who God is. We want to know how are we, how are we to apply this knowledge of who God is to my everyday situation. You know, when I'm facing tax situations, when I'm facing my, my kids getting out of control, but I, what do we know about who God is that would give me wisdom, would give me application in this situation. Anybody in that boat want to know, hey, how do I, how do I take from what I know about God and apply it to my everyday situation? We know this, and if you've been at Capital City Church for a while, we talked a lot about the gospel and the gospel fluency. We want to, we want to be gospel fluent people. We want to not just know about God, but we want to say what, who He is and what He's done, and apply it to my everyday life. Because everything I do comes out of who God is, right? 
we know this, the, the gospel story, the gospel narrative, when we go into our MC groups, right, is that there was a creation, right? God created us, then there was a fall, but he redeemed us through Jesus, and then we have a restoration, right? This is the, the, the story of all of our lives. This starts with who we are, right? We're creating who we are, uh, our identity, our fall, what our problem is in our life uh, has been broken. Um, and then we, we go into redemption. What is it that's going to resolve this problem that we have? And uh, then it goes into our restoration, getting back to our identity, being able to be the best that we can do. And if we, if we study any, like, advertisement, you go, on, you go on TV, you watch, everybody just watched maybe the Super Bowl, you saw tons of different advertisements, right? People trying to sell you their product, maybe it was a, the, the new, newest car, maybe it was the best drink, or the next jewelry line, or the next uh, fragrance, right? And they, go, they go and they follow the same story, right? It, usually it starts something like this, you were made to be awesome. Especially, maybe we talk about like uh, Under Armour or Nike, right? You are made to be awesome, but you're not awesome, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the fall. Uh, uh oh, you were made to be awesome. This is how you're created to be. There's a fall. Oh, you you aren't quite hitting that, that awesome mark. You're, you're maybe they even said you're a little lame right now. So you need what? You need to buy the latest sneaker, uh, the Nike sneaker, or the Nike Fitbit, or or, or the next uh, item, the next car, because. You're getting that item will then help you again re be restored to your rightful awesomeness. Right. That's what you're created to be, right? But if we look at the redemption story, now this back to the gospel, back to who God is, right? Then we know that God created us to have a relationship with Him, with others, and with His creation. We fell. Oh, there's sin. We rebelled against <laughs> who God is, and that caused a break in the relationship between us and God, us and other people, and us and the creation that He made. And so what was the solution? What was the, what is the, the product, for, so to say, that, that God inserted? The Jesus himself. He is the one that brings now a right relationship with God, a right relationship with others, a right relationship with creation. He redeems all things. He makes things right in our lives. And what does that do? Then it brings us to our restoration. It brings us back to full circle to where he intended us to be. We know that's the, that's the gospel story. That's, that's how it's all laid out. And we see in the Old Testament, this story playing out, right? So God in his amazing character is good to the Israelite people. He shows his faithfulness to them. He shows his goodness to them. He provides for them. If we read the Psalms earlier, right? They're going through the Red Seas and he splits the Red Seas. Whenever an enemy came against them, he would protect them and, and provide um, a defense against the enemies, right? But then what would happen? The Israelites would forget. For some reason, they, I mean, they, they must be just like me, right? They would forget, oh God, you were really good. You were really good, really good. And they would, oh, it's miserable. Okay, we've got to find something else. We've got to find another way. And they would break their ties with, with God. Oh, and then they find it back in. And then God, what? He proves his faithfulness again. He says, all right, all right, Zero. This is this who I am. This is who I am again. I'm really good. I'm amazing. I'm going to treat you well. And then again, we find, oh, they fell again. And so this is cycle through the Old Testament until the New Testament and God enters in Jesus and restores everything and redeems everything and he makes all things new. So then how do we as a people that we want to, if, if James here encourages us, if anybody lacks wisdom, sometimes I lack the ability to apply who God is to my current situation and I find myself just like the Israelites falling again failing again, messing up, turning to my own desires, turning to my own understandings, trying to figure things out on my own, and I forget who God is. And I find myself in that same cycle. I said, I need this. God, I need this wisdom. Paul, the James is saying here, wisdom is being able to apply who God is to our current situation. Wisdom is the ability to understand the ideas of the gospel and then, and then apply them to lead us toward right action. Right, because on my own devices, on my own wisdom, and my own understanding, sometimes, uh, not sometimes, uh, many times, I get things wrong. So I need that wisdom. I need to say, God, help me. I want to understand who you are in such a way that it directs me to live right, to live like you would. And it's something that the Israelites failed to do. But now we have insert Jesus, we can, who we have an ability to ask him of everything that we desire to know and then apply it to this. God, give me wisdom. 
My kids are crazy. God, give me wisdom. How, how do I apply your character that you are patient, you are kind, you are loving in every situation? How do I apply that that I know about you to loving my kids in this situation? God, you are one that, that you have everything that I could ever, you have an inheritance, you own all things. You are a major financial broker. You, you are to distribute needs in it. God, help me apply what I know about you, about your goodness and your financial genius to be able to spot to my current situation. God, give me wisdom. Right? Help me apply what I know about you to my current situation. You know, sometimes it's, it's difficult you know, when we talk about previous previous weeks that talk about the, the trial and tribulation. Sometimes we uh, we have a hard time understanding what God is, is doing in the middle of this, right? So sometimes there's, there's something that that God is doing, some kind of trial, some kind of hardship that He He's doing the situation in happening in our life, maybe uh, some kind of circumstance with our family, some kind of brokenness that we're experiencing, right? And and we want to, and this is what. James is saying, he's saying, it's not just that you count it, consider all joy. This is kind of like the answer to that. So what do we do if in the middle of a situation I don't have joy? Ask for wisdom. Ask, how do I apply you, God, to this situation, this circumstance that I'm going through? So this is, uh, what, is this, what does this say? Now let's look a little bit further in verse, uh, verse 5. So we, we say here, if anybody lacks wisdom, what should we do? What is the action that we should take? If we say, okay, I know things about you, but I, I don't know how to apply this decision, what should we do? You can answer that, it's not rhetorical. What should we do? If we lack wisdom, what should we do? Ask. Ask. God. ask. This is, you should ask God. Well, it would be great if it just leaves it at that. All right, ask God. I'm like, okay, I, I like wisdom. God, I want to ask you. All right? But then it, it, Every, every action, again, right, is based off of who God is. So there's a, for every imperative, there is an indicative that's been stated. Right? There's a truth about who God is, then, it, uh, then, we, then he asks us to do something. There's an imperative that is given, but it's all based on truth. So let's look here. What is this truth? What is James revealing about who God is, his character, that then encouraged us that we can ask? that he wants us to ask, and that he's going to give it to us once we do ask, right? So let's look here. James chapter 1, verse 5. If anyone asks, lacks wisdom, you should ask God. You should do something. There's an imperative. You should ask God. This, who gives generously to all without finding fault. So this is a major truth about who God is here that's then, that James inserts here. So it's not just, oh, I lack wisdom, oh, I'm, I'm miserable, I, I, I don't know what to do, I, I need some help here. It's, and it doesn't just say, okay, ask God, and you know, maybe he's going he, he's gonna to come through, maybe he, he, we don't know about this character. Of God. No, he, he reveals that this character, God is generous, and he gives without finding fault. And I love this because... You know, sometimes I, I struggle with the situation of like, okay, um, I asked the question and I, I got the result, but then I, I have to go back to, to find out again what it was that was said or what was stated. Ever, anybody go, going through a process or going through a recipe or something like that, right? And you, you, got the, you got the order of commands and you're going through it, and then you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta go back to the beginning, I gotta go ask again. Like, I love this, it says, he, he gives without finding fault. So he, he gives, and no matter how many times we come to him and ask, right. he's going to keep on going. He doesn't find fault in us. That's, that's really hard because sometimes it, I have to change the way I think about who God is, right, and his character. I think sometimes I, I'm convinced that many of us think that God is, is, is standing back. Mm. That he doesn't, he's actually not leaning for he's not actually for us. That he's actually standing away from us, waiting to see what mistakes we're, we're making. Or, or, he's, or he's standing back and he's saying, you know, this week, you haven't really read your Bible this week. You haven't really, uh, you know, done your devotion. You didn't really witness or do anything good. So, you know, you only get one generous gift per week. And you haven't met your quota yet. So, 
I'm sorry, if you ask me, it's, at this time I'm not going to do it. No, it's, James is, is telling us something about the character of God, that he's, he's generous in his gifts, and he doesn't find fault. So no matter how many times we come to him, he's going to say, you know what, I, I want to give, give you wisdom. If you're asking him, I want to give you wisdom, I, I am for you. This is, a, this is a fundamental thinking that we have to change in our mind. This, this is an addiction. This is something that never changes my God. That, that He is somebody who is fully generous. So we can't do, we can't ask. We can ask wisdom. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. We can ask Him. He has a posture that is for us. And James is reassuring us of that again in this fact. Hey, we're going through things, we're going through trials, you consider it all joy. Hey, but if you lack wisdom, ask God. And you know what? He is a generous, for you kind of person. I was looking through um, and studying, studying this and, and watching a few different um, speakers and, and trying to get to pay some, some knowledge and some wisdom. How do I, how do I talk to talk and bring this to um, our body here at Cal City Church. And, it, and it, one of the gentlemen mentioned, he said, it, it's not, he's not for you in the Oprah Winfrey kind of way, right? So, I, I, and I mentioned that before, right? He's not for you in the, okay, here's the, the Porsche and the, and the nice things and all the wonderful things and here's the great things in your life. He, he's for you in the fact that he wants what is best for you, for you to be joy, joyful and feel loved and feel satisfied in him. So this is leading into this, not, not doubting me, right? So he's not there, and he, he's not, he doesn't just want our happiness, our, our health, and our wealth, right? He wants us to be fully loved, fully joyful, and fully satisfied in him. Because he knows how great and how awesome he is. And that's kind of James' thing. I'm, he, God is so awesome, you can be satisfied in him that anything he asks, he asks about, he's going to give to you. That's who he is. He's for us. He's not against us. So we can keep on asking, we can keep on going to him, and we can trust and remember who he is. And it, 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 it shows us what we can do. We can continue to ask. So let's look at verse 6 here. Because this is one, I think, scripture that has been um, used before and maybe even misquoted. So I'm going to, uh, hopefully, I'm going to take a little bit of liberties here with scripture and, and go back to scripture. We're going to focus on this. What is this thing about doubting? So if, if, if God says, I give generously, oh, what about me? What if, what if I have a question about who God is? What if I'm going through something really hard and I've got a lot of questions? So am I, am I not a lot of question? God, let's, let's look at this in verse 6. Verse 6 says this, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. I can, you, you guys have known some of my, my personal stories. When, when I'm going through a difficult time in my life, when things seem hopeless and hard and tough, for me, my personal story was in my marriage, and there's times where, where things feel difficult, tough, and hopeless. I had a lot of questions about who God was. And God, I don't understand this. God, you, you set this up. I, I pledged my life to Rachel. I mean, I got all these things planned. And, and God, you, you designed life for man and woman to be one. Like, why is this so difficult? And I would question them. Oh, God, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do this? Why? 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 I don't know if you've been, you've been in those situations. I don't understand this, God. Right? Was I sinning? Was I, was I not, uh, was God not going to answer me because I had these why questions while I doubted? I want to encourage us, when we doubt, to doubt forward. Mm. Right? There's a difference between a, uh, having doubts, having questions, and being, having the identity of a doubter. Right, to, to have questions, to research, to, to want to understand, to, to want to have the wisdom, to, to seek after God, it's a good thing. When we come up against something about God, and, and I, I don't know how that works, God. I don't know, uh, man, you're for life, and I don't know what this is. I, I don't understand this. To have these questions is a good thing to have. 
to go after God. Because it's, it's because the, the doubter, if we're doubting forward, it, it causes us to seek after and to find. But if I doubt in such a way that I, I re, I'm re, in resistance to finding true, then we're the only, the only person that we're hurting, then we become like this. I, I'm doubting my situation. I'm doubting the truth. And, and I, don't, I don't know if I can accept this. There's a, there's a mindset that is different, right? So when I doubt, I, I encourage us to be ones that doubt, to doubt forward. There's a, there's, uh, our faith, I, I, uh, our faith, the Christian faith, has been around for, for years, right? For, for centuries. And so there's been many people that have had many questions. And I understand sometimes, in, uh, you know, currently in our modern or our postmodern mindset that we have, we have lots of questions. And maybe, maybe, uh, maybe there's some questions that still have not been answered about who God is to solve every question that we have. But you know what? There's a lot of questions that have been asked about God that are answered. That are found in truth, that are found in this word, that are found many men have and women have thought about who God is, and there's there's truth out there. There's answers to the questions that we have. So doubt forward, doubt into who God is. And I believe that's when we get back to James. I believe that's what James uh, this, this difference is what James is talking about here. The one who doubts, the one who questions who God is, and the one who is is, is in doubt of him. Right? Mm -hmm. So doubt your doubts. If you're one in this room, you have a lot of questions about who God is and, and how this works and how it applies to you. Doubt your doubts. Seek after finding the truth of who God is and how it applies to your situation. There's a difference between doubting, having doubts, having questions, and being a doubter. There's a difference here in the loyalties, right? So when we look at this, the this in the Greek, this do not doubt, there's a difference in the loyalty, there's a divisiveness or a division in your loyalties. So don't have a, it's not that we're saying don't doubt, don't question who God is, don't seek after him. There's, here it's talking about, there's a division in your loyalties, who you're loyal to. If we know anything about God, God is an all in kind of God. In the Old Testament it reveals he, that God is a jealous God. He wants all of us. He wants, uh, He is for all of us, and He wants all of us. So there's no room for divided loyalties in verse 6, right? But when you doubt, you must believe and not, not doubt. When you, I mean, when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. And you maybe have maybe experiences in your life or experiences in somebody else who every circumstance that comes around, every new teaching, every new situation in life all of a sudden changes what they believe. They got this, this thing and that thing and wave after wave and now they're doing this new uh, program and that new program because, oh, I'll, this is the benefit of this over here and this is the benefit of this. And they have no stability. They're full of doubt. They're full of. They're, they're just divided in their loyalty of, of what they believe. They just don't. They're just doing everything. And then if we, if we that that way, that's a, they're, they're, you're not going to have your answer, your questions answered. You're not going to receive this wisdom. But you have to come to me as the source. You can't be uh, the the Greek even talks about this doubt being. It's like a being double soul. Having, having two different personalities, having two different identities of who you are, two different beliefs, double-souled person. Don't be that. Don't have two. Fully on who God is. The, some of the Greek scholars say, uh, say and I, my research would also confirm this, that this word, this doubting that, that James uses here, this word here, actually isn't found anywhere else in the Greek. They say, they say he, he might have even coined this phrase of being double soul, double minded. In verse eight, double don't be double minded. Don't be this double soul, double loyal person. You know, in the today's time, it's really interesting. Where um, it used to be, and I think it's certain environments. I know here at, at, in Madison, we have a high respect for those getting their PhD um, at. at 
UW and those that have, that have achieved high degrees, but there used to be a very high respect for those who are experts in their field, right? I mean, they, if a doctor or this person wrote, wrote an article is really important, they, they, they have their credentials, you know, the, the alphabet soup that's at the end of their name, like, and people would respect what that person had to say about a certain subject. But with the rise of social media and, and mom blogs and all sorts of different things, now the, the, the level of expertise, the, the value we place on different education levels, now it's kind of like, now like this level playing, right? So if you have your PhD and you say something about this, and then you have, you have a mom blog and you said something about this, or you, you posted something on Twitter, you read something on Twitter, all of them now have like this equal uh, playing field, this equal level of uh, weight in our lives. Because it, 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 and so this challenges us as a culture, it challenges us as a people, maybe, uh, maybe some of the younger in our church, like myself, it challenges us to think, okay, God's not asking, uh, asking to be one of many voices. Okay, I'm going to go to God, I'm going to go to this PhD, I'm going to read this blog, I'm going to read this Twitter, uh, Twitter feed about, about this, and now, and now, okay, now that I have all these different opinions, now I can make my decision. Uh, what, no, God is saying, if you're going to come to me and ask for wisdom, come to me. Don't be double minded. Don't don't have different worldviews. Don't don't have a don't, don't have a divided heart. Don't don't seek after wisdom in all these different. Come to me, and I'll give you wisdom. And what I give you is going to be good. It's going to be right, and it's going to be perfect. But come to me, ask of me, and I want to give you generously, abundantly, exactly what you need for your situation, for your time, in exact moment. Amen. And he gives it. Without reproach, without finding a fault. And so then it begs to ask the question if God is the one answering, if we're going to ask God of these things, we have to know how are we going to be receiving the, this wisdom, right? So it says, if you lack wisdom, if you lack, under, if you lack how to apply understanding to your certain situation, how to uh, apply the gospel to what's going on in your life, if you, if you lack that, ask me. And I'll give you generously. So if he's going to give us generously, and we need to ask, well, how is this, how do we receive this? How does he speak to us, right? If I'm going to ask him, I, I need to know, how do, I, how, do I, how do I hear this truth? One of the guys that I was listening to talked about, talked about this to his, uh, th this engaged couple that he was um, uh, talking to. And the couple came up to him and said, how, how do we hear, how do we listen, how do we know the answer to the questions that we ask God? And so one of the analogies that he gave was he said, you know, right now you guys are engaged and you're soon to be married. But let's just imagine for a moment, your husband, your, your uh, fiance, you guys get married, and he comes home and you ask him, how's your day? And as a, as a really good husband, we tell really good details about our day, and we say, it was fine. <laughs> well, uh, immediately, right, as, as the, the, the wife, the spouse, uh, at the moment, she, she, she doesn't know what it's fine means. So she's going to want to know, well, how was it? When did she clock in? What was the customers like when they came? You know, how was the employees that were with you? What kind of emails did you send today? You know, what was the, what, what, what did you make that day? What, what were the students, how did they respond to you? And they, the, that's what they're asking when they're asking, how was your day? And the response, it's fine, doesn't fill in all those blanks for them, right? So when he replies, it's, it's fine, it doesn't fill in all those questions. So then, but let's fast forward, okay, you told this couple, let's fast forward 20 years down the road. And the husband comes home, and the wife asks, how's your day? And the husband still quite hasn't learned how to fill in all those blanks yet for her, but says, it's fine. And he, tell, and he tells to the, the, the wife, the, the fiancé, at that moment, after 20 years, you're going to know what he means when he says, it's fine. Why? Because now you've been with him for 20, every day you've asked questions. And, and at the beginning you had to ask a lot of questions to figure out, okay, what he means when he says, it's fine. But then after a while, after you ask those questions, after you searched and, and got to know his character, and got to know what he's like, after 20 years, he, when he says, it's fine, you know exactly what he's meaning. And he, hey, all the conversation, all the questions have been answered in that one one word, or oh, three word answer. It was fine. He 
said, in the same way, you study who God is, you get to know who God is, and you get to know his character enough that in everyday situations, so in everyday circumstances, you've got this question, what should I do? Oh, I know this about God, and I'm able to apply it. So part of this, part of knowing the answers, part of hearing the voice of God, is studying to know who he is. Who is God? How did he react to the Israelites when they rebelled against them? How did he, how did he react to them when, he, when they asked for provision and they, they lacked provision? How did, they, how did they respond when somebody was sick and, and they needed healing? How did he respond when there was somebody that didn't know about him and they, and they didn't know about him? How did they, and, and, they, and you know him and then all of a sudden now you've got a situation in your life. Okay, the kids are out of control. How did he respond when there was chaos in the, in, in the Israelites? Oh, he was, he was full of peace and he was the steady one. That didn't move. Okay, now I can be one that is sturdy in this situation, not allow the chaos to get, to overwhelm me. I can have peace in this situation, right? These are, as we know him, we get to know how to answer how, how to act in these wisdom. We also know we are we are a church that believes in the Spirit of God. That Jesus said in John 16 that the Spirit was going to come and he was going to reveal <coughs> all truth to us. And so I don't know if you have a journal. I have I have a journal like this, but I, sometimes I'll write down my my question. I have God. God, what what do you mean? What do you mean in this situation? God, how how do I handle having two jobs and having and having a lot of stress? How do I find rest? How how do I do? You know, I got two kinds of things going on in my life, and I don't know. What to, God, how do I use who you are to apply the situation? I need some hope, God. How do I try? How do I convince myself? How do my my soul be convinced that I have hope in you because my situation is hopeless? And when we write these questions down, we go to the, the Word of God and we can pray and ask, Holy Spirit, receive, reveal to me the truth, reveal to me the knowledge of who God is, so that I can apply it to this situation. And the Holy Spirit will speak to us. Yes. Small voice. A, a reminder of a, of, a, of a truth in Scripture. He'll, he'll bring us to a passage and it, and it will begin to speak to us and answer the very questions that we have. It's amazing how many times I write down a question and I go to my, even, even if I'm on a reading plan in the Bible, and all of a sudden the questions that I have for that day matches up with the reading plan. I'm like, how do you do this every time? But the Holy Spirit, He, he guides us, He leads us to these truths that we need for our everyday life. So this morning, as, as we continue in this uh, passage of James, and we, we want to seek to know, God, how do we have wisdom for the everyday stuff of life? The imperative, what we should be doing is asking God. And I think everybody in this room has that ability. Say, God, show me what I should do in this situation. Show me how I can be a better father. Show me how I can be a better mother. How, show me how to be a wife, how to be a husband. Show me how to be the, a better person in the work field. Show me how to be a better researcher. Show me what I can do to be a better laborer. Show me what I can do to, to get out of this situation in my life. Show me how I can be honest here. You know, every situation there's a truth about God that can be applied to our situation and can show us what to do. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. This morning as we close, I want to invite us to ask of God. Say, God, I need some wisdom here. I, I want, I, I need to look more like you in this situation. God, uh, show me what's true about you that will change this thing I'm going through. That'll make me better and more like you in this situation. Give me wisdom. And the truth about who God is here is so powerful that He is generous and He gives without being full. He's leaning towards us. And when He, when he comes to He wants to answer. He wants to give us the wisdom. So this morning, let's ask God together. I want to pray. And then we're going to have a time, a, a moment, where we can just express to God, God, give, ask of Him, give me wisdom. Would you, re, would you
would you reveal to me who you are that I would be able to get through this? Can you give me the answer to these questions? Ask for God. And if you have a, uh, the back of the bulletin, you have something to write it down, it's always good to write, write down. And, and because I don't know what it, what it is, it says, to whom much is given, much is required, and, and who whom has much more is given. Right? And, and so I don't know what it is about the act of writing things down, but I, I feel like I have received more from God. Oh, that was a good nugget. And then as I write down that, that truth that God reveals in, He tends to give me more. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage us not to take this time lightly, but to ask of God and to write down, to say, to, to wrestle with God a little bit. And, and I believe He's going to give us some wisdom this morning. If you need anybody to pray with you, I know Pastor will be up here, myself will be up here, we can pray with you asking of God, but we're believing that we're going to be a church that's full of wisdom that's and leaning towards our doubts are leaning towards God. I want to know you more. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for James, that there is a, a book of the Bible that you dedicated full of wisdom for everyday stuff of life. And this verses today challenge us to ask when we lack. And so Father, we humble ourselves before you, and we come before you, and we say, God, we need wisdom. God, I need to know how that I can find rest, Father, when I am stressed. Father, I, I need to know how I can love my spouse the way that you love. Uh, God, I, I need to know how to love my children and to discipline them, Father, the way that you love and you discipline me. Father, help us to take what we know about you and to apply it to our everyday lives. Give us wisdom, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that your character is such that you are abundantly generous towards us, that you desire us to ask of you, that you find no fault, no matter how many times we ask, no matter how hard it is for us to get it, that you still want us to come to you and to ask. And God, you are there to give to us. Father, I pray as we ask, God, that we would receive. In Jesus' name.